In this video, we're going to be looking at solving simultaneous equations. Before we do that, let's just remind ourselves what it means to solve an equation. Let's say I've got this equation, 2x plus 7 equals 18. What does it mean to solve this equation? Well, to solve this equation, what we're trying to do is find the value of the unknown. x is the thing we don't yet know. Now, I'm not going to go through all the steps here, but hopefully, if you're watching this video, you are already comfortable with solving equations like this, which means you should be happy that x is 11 over 2, or 5 and a half. The important point is that solving an equation is about finding the value of the unknown. Now, what if I had a different equation? We've got x plus y equals 8. Can you solve this? Remember, solving an equation means we're looking for the value of the unknown. A problem we've got here is that there are two unknowns. There's x and y, and we don't know the values of either. And this actually means there are going to be an infinite number of solutions to this equation. To be more precise, there are going to be an infinite number of solution sets to this equation. Here are some examples of solution sets. Here are six examples. Like I said, there are infinitely many, but let's see what we mean by solution set. This is a possible solution set because if x was 0 and y was 8, then x plus y would be 8. 0 plus 8 is 8. But we don't know that that is the solution because who says it's that? Why can't x be 5 and y be 3? 5 plus 3 would give us 8. So this could be a solution. Or maybe x is 10 and y is negative 2. 10 plus negative 2, that gives us 8. Similarly, this is a solution set. This is a solution set. We don't have to stick with whole numbers. 0.5 plus 7.5, that gives us 8. So x plus y, yep, that's 8. x plus y, these add up to 8. So these are all solution sets, and there are infinitely many. So it's not really sensible to ask you to solve an equation like this, where you just have one equation, but two unknowns. But what if I give you some extra information? What if I'm looking for a solution set to this equation that is also a solution set to a different equation? So what if my other equation was x minus y equals 2. So I want to solve this equation and this equation at the same time and find the same solution set to both. Well, we could do this by trial and error. We know that all of these are solution sets to this equation. And we can ask ourselves if any of these also happen to be solution sets to this second equation. Let's try them out and see. So we want x minus y to equal 2. Well, is 0 minus 8 2? No. So x minus y is not 2. So this is not a solution set to this equation. What about this one? 10 minus negative 2. That equals 12. It doesn't equal 2. So this is not a solution set to this equation. What about this one? Is 0 0.5 minus 7.5 equal to 2? No, it's not. So this is not a solution set. Let's try this one. Is 5 minus 3 equal to 2? Yes, it is. So what we've done is actually find a solution set that works for this equation and for this equation. So we have solved these simultaneously. And that is the big idea for this video. Now, Doing this by trial and error is a long and slow process, so we need a better method, and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in the next few examples. Right, here is our first example. This is exactly the one we've been looking at, so we know that our solution set is going to be x equals 5, y equals 3. But we're going to look at how we can solve this without using trial and error. We're going to use a logical method that's going to help us get the answer quickly. Now, this pair of equations is actually quite easy to solve simultaneously because if you add these equations together, something quite interesting happens. Now, what do I mean by adding equations together? Well, 
What I mean is that we're going to add the left hand side of each equation together and then separately I'm going to add the right hand side of each equation together and we'll get two totals that are equal. Let's see why. Let's start with the easy bit. On the right hand side I've got 8 plus 2 and that will be 10. On the left hand side of the equal sign I'm going to have x plus y and I'm going to add that to x minus y. In other words what I want to put here is x plus y plus x minus y and if you look at that and try to simplify it you'll see that we actually end up with just 2x. Now I'm saying that 2x will equal 10 and I'm going to convince you that 2x really is equal to 10. To start with we know x plus y equals 8. So this thing in yellow equals this thing in yellow. We also know that x minus y equals 2. So this thing in green equals this thing in green. Now what have I got on the right hand side here? Well 10 is just the yellow plus the green. But I know that the yellow is also equal to this and the green is also equal to this. So the yellow plus the green that I get by working this out is the same, it's equal to what I get when I work out the yellow plus the green on this side. So 2x really is equal to 10. Now, why does this help us? Well, what's happened here is that we have eliminated y. We've just got an equation that only has x. We have eliminated one of the unknowns. So this process is called solving by elimination. What we can do from here is see that if 2x is 10, then x must be 5. I'm simply dividing the left and the right hand side by 2. Now, I haven't finished solving this pair of equations yet. I've only found x, and that is only half of the solution set. Notice, by the way, that we have got the correct x value. So, what do we need to do to find the other part of the solution set, this value for y? Well, we take this x value and we substitute it into one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one, you can normally pick whichever one you find easiest. I'm going to substitute it into this first one up here. So if x is 5, what we've actually got here is 5 plus y must equal 8. And then we can try and solve this equation. In this equation we've only got one unknown, that's the y. And hopefully you can see just by looking at it that y must be 3 in this case. 5 plus 3 is what gives us 8. So now we've got our full solution set. We already worked out x equals 5. We substituted that into this equation to find that y must be 3. So I've got x equals 5, y equals 3. This whole thing here is the solution set. And as you can see, we've got the same solution set as we got before. Here's the second example. I'm going to go through this one a lot more quickly. First, we're going to add these equations together. On the right hand side, I have 22 plus 13. So that is 35. And that's going to equal whatever I get when I add the left hand sides together. So I've got negative 2x plus 4y plus 2x plus y. And hopefully you can see that these x's will eliminate. I'll have negative 2x plus 2x later on. So they eliminate. And all I end up getting is positive 4y plus y, which is 5y. So we've got 5y equals 35. We can solve that quite easily to find that y equals 7. Now, that's not the end of it. I've only got y, but my solution set needs an x and a y. So I need to substitute this into one of these equations. I'm going to choose the second one. It just looks a bit easier to work with. There's no negative in here. So if I do that, I end up getting 2x plus 7 equals 13. Solving this equation then to find x, I get 2x equals 6, which means x equals 
3. So my solution set is x equals 3, y equals 7. So I'll just write that out clearly at the end. I've got x equals 3, y equals 7. Now, if you've got time, you can check your solution set by substituting these values in place of x and y in these equations. And if you do that, you should find that these values satisfy the equations. That means negative two lots of three plus four lots of seven really should equal 22, and two lots of three plus seven should equal 13. And if they don't, if any one of those doesn't work, that means this solution set is wrong. That means we made a mistake somewhere. So checking like that is a really good habit to get into, but it does take extra time. Here's example C. I'm going to start off doing most of the work for this one, but then I'll let you pause the video and complete the question. To start with, I'm going to add these equations together. On the right hand side, I get eight plus negative seven, which is one, and that will equal what I get when I add two X minus five Y to negative three X plus five Y, which will give me negative X. Hopefully, you can see that these y's eliminate. I've got a minus 5y here and plus 5y here. And when I add these expressions together, those eliminate. So all I'm left with is 2x minus 3x, which is negative 1x or just negative x. Now, if negative x equals 1, that means x equals negative 1. All I've done there is multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand side by negative 1. So we have found the value of x that we're looking for, but we haven't found the full solution set. We also need to find the value of y. So pause the video and see if you can find the value of y. Here's one way you could do it. You could substitute this into the first equation. If you do that, you're going to get two lots of negative one. So that's negative two. And then we need to subtract 5y, and that must be 8. So negative 2 minus 5y equals 8. This is the equation we're trying to solve. What I'm going to do is add 5y to the left and the right-hand sides. That's going to give me negative 2 equals 8 plus 5y. Now I'm going to subtract 8 from the left and the right-hand sides. Subtracting 8 off the right-hand side just leaves me with 5y on the right. Subtracting 8 from the left gives me negative 10 there. So if 5y is negative 10, then one lot of y, or just y, is going to be negative 10 divided by 5, which is negative 2. That means my solution set is x equals negative 1, y equals negative 2. Here's the final example. Pause the video and see if you can work this one out for yourself. Okay, first I'm going to add the equations together. On the right hand side I have 6 plus 6, which is 12, and that's going to equal 2y minus 4x plus 4x plus y. Hopefully you can see that these x's will eliminate each other, and all I'll end up with is 2y plus y, which is 3y. We just had to take a little bit of extra care in this case because the x's and y's weren't presented in line for us already, like they were in the previous questions. Now, if 3y equals 12, then y equals 4. But we can't stop there. A solution set to this pair of equations needs a value for y, but also a value for x. So we've got a bit more work to do. I'm going to substitute this value of y into the second equation, that looks easier to work with. So I'm going to get 4x plus 4, because that y there is 4, and that equals the 6. Solving this equation, we get 4x equals 2, which means x equals 2 quarters, which is the same as a half. So 
Just be aware that solutions don't have to be whole numbers. You can get fractions like this. So to finish off, our solution set is x equals a half, y equals 4.